Hey everybody, Rob Maurer here, and today we are talking about a topic that has been heavily discussed recently, the 1 million mile battery. This is something that has been widely expected to be introduced by Tesla at their upcoming battery day, and those expectations have been stoked by a number of recent reports by the media as well as published findings from Jeff Don's battery research team who has a partnership with Tesla. So for the background here in mid-May, Reuters reported that, quote, electric car maker Tesla Inc. plans to introduce a new low-cost long-life battery in its Model 3 sedan in China later this year or early next year that it expects will bring the cost of electric vehicles in line with gasoline models and allow EV batteries to have second and third lives in the electric power grid, end quote. And then that report continued on to say, quote, the new million mile battery at the center of Tesla's strategy was jointly developed with China's Contemporary Amperix Technology Limited, or CATL, and deploys technology developed by Tesla in collaboration with a team of academic battery experts recruited by Musk, three people familiar with the effort set, end quote. So for those that have followed Tesla for a while, the concept of a million mile battery and powertrain is not new. Tesla has actually aspired to create vehicles that can last a million miles for at least the last five years. Back in July of 2015 in a blog post, when introducing the ludicrous mode on the Model S, Elon Musk wrote, quote, while working on our goal of making the powertrain last a million miles, we came up with the idea for an advanced smart fuse for the battery, end quote. That fuse at the time helped enable ludicrous mode, but as you can see, Musk mentions the goal of the million mile powertrain, which of course would include the battery all the way back then. Since that point in time, Elon has mentioned that concept occasionally on earnings calls or in other discussions. So that report by Reuters in mid-May wasn't all that surprising, except for a couple minor details for close observers of Tesla. However, fast forward a couple weeks to early June and a Bloomberg report mixed a little bit more confusion into this topic when they reported on comments from CATL's chairman, Zhang Yukun. The headline of that article was, quote, a million mile battery from China could power your electric car, end quote. And Bloomberg wrote that CATL was, quote, ready to produce a battery that lasts 16 years and 2 million kilometers or 1.24 million miles, chairman Zhang Yukun said in an interview, end quote. They then quote Zhang as saying, if someone places an order, we are ready to produce, end quote, adding that he did not disclose if any contracts for those batteries had been signed yet, but that he did add that those batteries would cost about 10% more than the batteries that are now inside electric vehicles. All right, so what's the deal here? Reuters in mid-May reports that Tesla jointly developed a million mile battery with CATL, and then a couple weeks later, CATL says that they've got a million mile battery and they are ready to sell it to anybody who wants it. So this led to a lot of questioning about Tesla's competitive advantage. We've heard them talk for so long about a million mile battery, and if the million mile battery is some holy grail, and CATL, Tesla's alleged partner on their own million mile battery, is ready to sell it to anyone, then what is Tesla's advantage there? Well, the most important thing to understand here that I think a lot of listeners do understand is that there is a lot more that goes into a battery than just the longevity or the number of cycles that the battery can handle without too much degradation. A battery has a number of different characteristics and often optimizing for one of those characteristics requires sacrifices of another. So battery development is a constant battle to find that sweet spot among at least the following characteristics and probably more than this than I'm forgetting. This is probably easier to follow on video, but of course you have cost per kilowatt hour. There are a number of factors that go into that, but two huge ones are scale of production and efficiency of that production. Obviously Tesla is laser focused on that. We'll talk about that a little bit more in a minute. But then you have your chemistry to consider and the materials that go into that, how much those materials cost, how available they are, can you actually scale that material and get enough of those resources, and how are you sourcing them. That all plays into the energy density both from a volumetric energy density perspective or how much energy you can fit into a given space, and then you have gravimetric energy density or how much energy you can fit into a given weight. These are obviously critical factors for a vehicle, particularly as it relates to the vehicle's range. Batteries then are of course meant to eventually power something, so you have to consider how much power they can output, then you have to consider the charge rate, so how much energy they can take in, how quickly. Those factors can influence stability and safety, obviously those need to be incredibly high. And then of course finally you have the life cycle and how the degradation looks over the course of the battery's life. So the point here is that just knowing one or two of these characteristics doesn't really get us very far, and that is where CATL's announcement falls short. They're saying that they have a million mile battery, but that only tells us about the life cycle, and the only other information that we get with this announcement is cost, with CATL saying it would cost about 10% more than other EV batteries. Life cycle is not the be all end all of the battery, and that leads us to the title, which sorry for bearing the lead a little bit, but we needed that background. But Tesla actually already has a million mile battery. 
This is coming from Tesla's recently published 2019 impact report, which if you haven't read it, I would definitely recommend it. Tons of good information in there, which we'll be talking more about soon. But one of the pages that has fascinated me has been page eight, the life cycle analysis of Tesla EVs versus average ICE vehicles. Tesla has a chart on this page that compares the total wheel to well emissions for the Model 3 in various use cases versus an average midsize premium ICE vehicle. And what's really interesting here is that they include both manufacturing emissions and emissions from using the vehicle. People are often critical of electric vehicles because they take a little bit more energy to produce, so we get that long tailpipe vehicle emissions story. Tesla is rebutting that here with this information. Yes, it does take a little bit more energy and emissions to produce a Model 3 versus an average premium midsize ICE, but not really all that much, and that is easily overwhelmed by the lower emissions in the use phase. So anyway, Tesla is estimating here that the average vehicle is in service for about 17 years at about 12,000 miles per year, 200,000 miles in total roughly. So they're taking the total emissions created by producing the vehicle and amortizing that over 200,000 miles, and then adding that amortized amount to the actual emissions created by driving the car around from the gasoline and all the refining and things involved in that process. Long story short, the emissions from manufacturing ends up being about 10% of the total emissions of the vehicle. This is where the million mile battery topic comes in, because if you can have a vehicle that travels a million miles, then the amortization of that manufacturing emissions is going to be over a million miles instead of 200,000, effectively meaning that you have reduced manufacturing emissions for the utility that you gain from it by 80%. Tesla demonstrates this point by showing what they label as Model 3 ride sharing use and Model 3 personal use. For ride sharing, the manufacturing emissions per mile is much, much lower because it's spread out over more miles. So one of the fascinating parts about this is that to calculate those emissions from the manufacturing phase for a ride-sharing Model 3, well, you would have to actually know how much emissions are involved in creating that million-mile battery. So that was one of the questions that popped up in my mind as I was reviewing this, and sure enough, Tesla actually gives us the information we need here to figure out how they're calculating this. They say in the description for the quote-unquote ride-sharing Model 3 that is supposed to last a million miles that it is, quote, what emissions per mile could be if the Model 3 were used for ride sharing over 1 million miles using cell chemistry from our energy products, end quote. So newsflash, Tesla is saying right there with that statement that they already have battery cells that are capable of being utilized in a vehicle and lasting more than 1 million miles. When I reached out to Tesla Investor Relations to confirm that I was interpreting this correctly, they said that yes, cells that can cycle to those magnitudes are available commercially and are used in large-scale energy products. This makes sense when we think about it. Tesla's probably actually had a million mile capable battery for a long time that they just haven't opted to use in their vehicles. If we go all the way back to the Powerwall 1, on the warranty for that product, there was no limit on the number of times that you could cycle that battery in a 10 year period. If that were cycled daily, that would be 3,650 cycles, which would be right around what you would need for a million mile battery. Similarly today on the Powerwall 2, Tesla's warranty offers unlimited cycles on that product as well and at least 70% remaining energy capacity after 10 years. That 70% number, by the way, is the same that Tesla uses on their battery warranties for their vehicles. So pretty clearly Tesla could do a million mile battery in their vehicles today if they wanted to, but this whole conversation illustrates why the announcement from CATL is really not all that consequential when we think about the competitive marketplace for Tesla. First of all, there are just so many unknowns for those other factors on this battery from CATL. And this is why battery day is so important because we're going to learn more than just Tesla has developed a million mile battery because they've already got that. What they need is a million mile battery that comes in at a low enough cost per kilowatt hour to make sense in vehicles like the Model 3 and beyond with proper energy density, power and charge rate capability, and scalable materials that can safely operate in a vehicle. The other major influencing factor here is that autonomy and the million mile battery go hand in hand. If a vehicle is only driven 12,000 miles per year, well, a million mile battery is going to last for 83 years, no one's keeping a car that long. The utilization has to be much higher to have the capability to extract any of that value that the million mile powertrain or battery presents. Autonomy drives up that utilization. And sure, vehicle to grid would increase the utilization of those cycles as well. So anyway, my main point with all of this is just to add some clarity around that CATL announcement of the million mile battery. That's not even close to meaning that everybody just catches up automatically on battery technology. And this is why Battery Day is so exciting because there are so many factors here and hopefully for Battery Day we get to learn a little bit more about all of those factors and how Tesla is optimizing for each of them and how those optimizations vary for Tesla's different products and vision of the future. Cost is obviously a huge component, so scale of production important, 
Production efficiency important. We already know Tesla plans to walk through some of that. They said they would tour their cell production line. There's already some information about this leaking out with Tesla's so-called Roadrunner project. We got some information in the filing that Tesla is planning to keep this presumable production line operating 24-7 with 400 workers operating in four different shifts. So while this initial cell production is likely a pilot line that will be expanded elsewhere, it does look like Tesla's actually probably planning to do some significant volume out of Fremont for batteries as well on that pilot line. Anyway, back to the million mile battery and CATL's announcement, the last point that I wanted to make on that, CATL said that the battery cost would be about 10% more than other EV batteries, but we just talked about how without autonomy, it doesn't really make sense to pay for that extra number of cycles, and other automakers are already struggling to bring a cost-competitive electric vehicle to market without adding that 10% surcharge. So yeah, it's no wonder that CATL's chairman is saying that if someone places an order, they're ready to produce. I don't anticipate someone placing an order for those cells. That's not Tesla. The utility beyond 200,000 miles is the last thing that's on their mind at this point. Anyway, that is it for today. As always, thank you for listening. Don't forget to subscribe and sign up for notifications. Again, we'll go through a little bit more of that impact report in the future, so don't miss that. Also, make sure you're following me on Twitter, at Tesla Podcast, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.